Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is a lecture hall, and lectures on this university start in time, so also lunch meetings on this university start in time. Welcome to this meeting. My name is uh, Marcel Becker, Assistant Professor of Philosophical Ethics. I chair this meeting, organized by Rabout Reflects in close cooperation with the Christine Moorman program, the program that intends to stimulate participation of women on the university. We have a very dense program. The next 75 minutes there will be three presentations followed by discussion. But before I introduce the speakers, I give the floor to, the, to Wilma de Koning. She is member of the executive board of the university. Uh, she will tell you something about the Christine Mormon. I've got the impression that you are the driving force behind the program. Please, Wilma. Well, welcome. I'm, I'm really impressed that so many of you took the effort to come to this meeting uh, of Radboud Reflex. Um, and for me, it's a sign that uh, diversity is a topic that's alive and kicking. It's a hot topic, so to say. Um, I'm speaking in English, and I see the uh, invitation is in, was in Dutch. And the program was presented in Dutch. And at the moment, we also have a discussion about the language on this, uh, this campus. Um, and I have to be very honest to say that for me, speaking in English is, is difficult. And I think there are a lot of people on this campus who think speaking in English is difficult. Um, so I try to do it in English. But if it becomes difficult, I will switch to Dutch if you don't mind. But I'll do my utmost best because I realize I'm an example in this. So again, a pleasure that you are all here and that diversity is uh, on the top of the agenda of everyone here. It's also good to see that there are a few men. <laughs> but welcome to you men in this <laughs> lecture hall. And I think it's a good ambition that for the next time we women have a sort of um, opdracht that we, everyone invites one man to join us to meetings like this. I think that's a good thing to do. So I think we have a good moment for the start of our Christine Moorman program. Because we think that mixed gender teams generally perform better than teams with only men or only women or just one man or just one woman. And I can speak uh, from my own experience if I say that I had a lot of situations where, where I was the only woman in front of uh, a lot of men. And of course, uh, I have a nice job and I do nice, uh, nice things. Uh, leuke baan, uitdagende baan, leuke dingen, uh, interessante uitdagingen. But it should be so much more fun if there were, were more uh, women in the boardroom. And I think... Uh, if there are more women in the boardroom, if there are more women in uh, the boards of the faculties, if there are more women professors, if there are more women, or a more equal balance between men and women in, at all levels at the university, uh, we, uh, we perform better and our work will become more fun, so to say. So what we want, and that's what we uh, uh, described in our Christine Moorman programme, that we want uh, more women, but also more men on the positions or the, the, the functions in our organization or the levels in our organization where there are more women. Because we also have uh, jobs or functions when, where, the, the women, uh, where, where there are more women than, than men. For instance, uh, the secretary functions or I should say the personal assistant functions, there are more women than men and I know that at uh, MSO, the, department, uh, uh, the policy department of this university, there is an internship for a secretary personal uh, assistant uh, uh, job and there's a, a, a man on that internship. So he is a sort of role model for, for this. Um, so the 25% for uh, uh, at least 25% women and men on all 
uh, 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 levels in the organization is, uh, is an ambition we formulated in our Christine Moorman uh, program. Um, and that means that we have uh, a very big ambition to realize that in 2020. Uh, there are some of you who say, well, the 25% in 2020, that's not a real big ambition, because at the moment we are at 22%. And if you uh, say it like this, well, then you could say, well, you have a point there. But if we look at the figure, figures and we see what is leaving university, uh, uh, the percentage or the, the amount of professors leaving in university the, the next years to 2020, then uh, it will be a hell of a job to reach 25% women in 2020. So we have to work hard to achieve these goals and one a way we are doing this is by launching the Christine Moorman programme. And this programme is named after our university's first male a female professor, <laughs> I was afraid that I would make that mistake, a female professor, um, and she, she studied Latin and Greek uh, in Nijmegen, of course. She graduated in 1928. She was university lecturer and she was appointed as professor in 1952. And she was a real pioneer for diversity. She had the courage, the courage to swim against the, the tide uh, in a male-dominated discipline and she really was a sort of role model for us. And that's why we decided to name the program after her. And I deliberately say Christine Moorman program, because if you try to pronounce this in English, you get Christine Moorman. And of, <laughs> of course, <laughs> it's the ultimate goal to reach that, because if we really succeed, we have to hire more men, because we have too much women, so it's the ultimate goal, but we didn't realize that, to be very honest. So now I will launch the program, and I will do that by uh, uh, pushing the button for the, the website, the diversity website, and here you have the website for the uh, diversity or the Christine Moorman program. Um, and as you can see, and you will have to look it up yourself, uh, we have a program that stimulates uh, hiring female uh, uh, scientists, uh, as well professors, as uh, researchers, as uh, tenure tracks, so young talent. We have a program for, um, be, um, well, let me put it the other way, it's that we, uh, the most important thing we want to do is not only uh, um, label extra budget for hiring extra female scientists or uh, extra female uh, um, uh, managers or leaders, but we also want to talk about our own attitude, our own biases with regard to diversity. And that's why we also have one of the themes in our program is about uh, biases. So we offer different programs to uh, uh, help you to take a look at yourself, your own attitude, your own mindset with regard to this uh, topic. Um, and the most important thing, and uh, research uh, um, um, bevestigt, <laughs> bevestigt dit, um, is that we all have uh, unintentionally uh, subconscious biases. And um, it may be hard to imagine, but an application letter that is signed by a man tends to be accepted more readily than the same application letter signed by a woman. And this is the unfortunately unfortunate reality, and is even more likely when the person selecting the application is, I hate to say it, a woman. So we women, we have some homework to do, so to say. So now I have some news for you, because um, today it's the launching of the Christine Moorman program, the, the, the formal start of the program, but um, we already communicated uh, about the program and it took a long uh, period to, uh, um, om het programma door de verschillende gremia te krijgen, to get it approved by the board and by uh, the medezeggenschap, etc. It's a university, so we take our time for that kind of uh, policy notes. Um, but what I did to prepare uh, this, this, um, this meeting, this speech today, is I looked at the uh, most recent figures 
of our appointments. And what we see, and I'm really proud, and I think it's sort of historical moment that I can say that we have appointed in 2016, at this moment, 10 professors, of which five of them are women. So 50% of the appointments are women. And I think it's a historical moment that we have reached that. And of course, it's not enough. We have a long way to go, and we work hard on it. And for to reach that and to keep this 50% ongoing, we have to uh, start and open the dialogue. We have to keep uh, the dialogue living about diversity. And uh, I want to end with saying that diversity is not only about women, and I hope you understand that there are also cultural differences uh, are important with regard to the topic of diversity, but we, ch we have chosen uh, to give the priority to women, but all the other diversities, they are on the agenda, so they will, they will get their attention. I wish us all the right men-women balance in our organi organizational, in all our organizational levels. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wilma, for this inspiring elucidation uh, of the background of the Christine Mormon program. Now, she has talked something to you. Uh, I would like to ask a question to you. Please take your little boxes and I will ask you two questions. The first one is the easiest. <laughs> Are you male or female? And please vote all of you. This is the easiest question you get, so no problem, you can vote all. <laughs> you still can vote? You still can vote? Everyone indeed is voting, yeah? Okay, yeah? Okay, clear. That's all the, already the impression I had when I looked into the, to the audience. Now the second question is a bit harder. Last five years, I've suffered from gender inequality. You can visit. You can vote now. Okay, yeah, the results. Okay, this is 50-50, almost. Slightly more agree. But now the question, of course, is what is the male-female distinction related to this question? That's what you want to know. Please, show me that result. Male and... This is for male and this is for female. Yeah? Female, 60% agree. And what was the male number? And 21. So there is a serious difference between women suffer more than male from the gender. Okay, of course we can discuss about it. We don't do that now. We, uh, we will discuss uh, later. Uh, I just want to present you some slides. Now we have an impression of your opinion, your idea about. Uh, I want to present you uh, two slides. The first slide is uh, about career tracks. We start on this university with relatively more PhDs, 60%, but we end with only 30% uh, professor. And male, this is just the opposite. This is called the scissors model. You start with more women, but you end in the higher ranks of the organization with less women. Well, it looks like a tailor shop. This is a perfect scissors. There won't be many organizations that have such a beautiful scissors like this. 
Of course, that will be, uh, that must change. Um, perhaps you have the impression, okay, this is traditionally the situation, but now we are improving. The next slide is about recent develop developments. And that scares me a bit, because there is hardly any improvement being past five years. So we can be proud about that 50% of past three weeks, but uh, we must acknowledge that overall past five years there hardly has been any improvement. So there's work to do and therefore we, had the Christine, we have the Christine Warman uh, program. Okay, um, two um, the next speaker, uh, Professor. Annalisa uh, Fasolino, you hardly can't wait. You're so eager to talk. I uh, don't have ten the, minutes. <laughs> yeah, you are from the from the science faculty, the science faculty that is traditionally male dominated. Annalisa is professor computational condensed matter. You won't explain what it is exactly. Okay, you can do so later. And in gender diversity, you are very dedicated. You are very engaged. On your website, we can read. I am involved in several activities meant to improve the gender balance in physics. Annalisa, the floor is yours. Yeah. <coughs> Hi. Yeah, actually, that quote was before I became uh, chair of this committee that has been uh, uh, installed in the uh, Faculty of Science from 2016 and uh, hopefully, hopefully will ever end, but will go on until needed. Uh, there is a little bit of, yeah, the, the, it's a bit flatter <laughs> than what was meant to be. So this commission has been created following a recommendation of a working group that has been installed in 2014, uh, chaired by Fritz van Drager, that has done really a, a nice job um, uh, producing this report with a number of recommendations and uh, from this stems uh, this commission. So I have to say I'm totally not an expert in gender studies or whatever besides we being a woman, I'm just a physicist. So we start uh, our way with a plot. This is the so-called scissor plot. Uh, it, is, it looks so, uh, so the, the idea is that there is a percentage, let me find a, a point, there is a percentage of men and women uh, from students uh, to professor and since the aspect ratio has totally changed, uh, there is a delay, professor is here, <laughs> so I don't know, something went wrong with the, in any case you can see this is usually uh, this plot should look like this, like the one uh, Marcel showed. This is, for instance, for Italy. Uh, but in our faculty, we start already at the low level. It's 40% girls, and this 40% is mostly due to biology, and all the other faculties have uh, much lo lower. Uh, the professor point uh, that is, sorry, I'm totally. Uh, no, uh, the last one, of course. The professor one, that is the se uh, this seven percent, eight, uh, nine percent, or something like that, has gone a little bit lower. This is uh, 2000. The, the full points is 2015, and the empty is 2010. Uh, this is always the, se the seven women uh, professor. Uh, the percentage has gone down because the, prof the male professor has become higher. Okay, so this is where we start. Uh, and, and so we have formed this commission. Uh, there are many people from all the institutes of, the, of our, our uh, faculty, plus some true experts from management and And we have simple goals, improve, improve participation of women and minorities in science. And uh, I really stress that women are not a minority. I mean, we are 50%. <laughs> So this is why it's also easier to start with women because uh, it's obvious it's easy to count and they should be half. Um, but the, the, the true purpose is that there is a lot of research and also personal experience that uh, 
um, a mixed uh, uh, environment can be really good for science, uh, for innovation, uh, for creativity. So this is our goal, create a better environment for science and innovation, and at the same time uh, create a better atmosphere for, for everybody. So the, the, um, I just want to mention a few actions that we have taken. We, we do what we can. We have made a group. We meet every month. Uh, we have some um, uh, points. So there is an action to give 50 kilo euro to women uh, uh, around the pregnancy to keep activities going. Uh, we are thinking of uh, mentoring for young people. Uh, this is a very important one. We try to understand how gender plays a role in recruitment. Uh, we want to understand uh, from exit interview what has been the experience of people staying in our faculty, uh, gathering data, uh, trying to also to uh, stimulate our uh, students, really university students, uh, to, um, to aim at to be very good. And uh, we, we just meet and uh, we try to do what we can within the limits of what we can do. And now, uh, so uh, this is it, but so since you are here, um, uh, you could think how you stand. I mean, do you, uh, are you neutral towards gender issues or not? So a simple test that one can take, and maybe many of you have done, is a test that uh, has been uh, uh, is to find this, uh, the Harvard implicit bias test. So if you type on Google Harvard and implicit, you come here, and there are several tests, and one is gender and science. And uh, it would be nice that you do. If you do it, uh, at the end, uh, you get your score that is presented like this. Oh, so, uh, that is presented like this. So uh, this, is, this is the result of all people that have ever participated in this test. So the, the, this three, the, uh, orange means that science is associated with men uh, strongly, moderately, and slightly. And this is, these are the average results for, uh, for whoever has done it at, uh, um, at Harvard. Um, now we have used this test. We have had the launch of our activities about uh, two months ago, a few months ago, two months ago, where also Vilma participated. And so in the whole of the institute, we have let people uh, take this test. And so these are the results, and uh, uh, same uh, as before, but uh, here uh, the, the sample is small. We had only 80 people in total, uh, but look at that. So uh, strongly biased in the men, 38%, moderately 31 slightly 11 Interestingly, also women are strongly or moderately biased associating uh, science and, uh, and and actually we have talked to most of these are students and they say why should I not be biased I've never had a lecture from a woman so many of them so so, uh, <laughs> so this is uh, kind of shocking these are the people that uh, decide what happens in our uh, faculty so okay so th this was my talk it's very simple and uh, and I have a May I say that now my, comes now my statement? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this was uh, uh, the activities of the Gender Commission at the, uh, the university. The, the proposition is only mine. I take full responsibility for this. Um, so, of course, it's a bit... So my styling is the following. Uh, at the Radboud, actions that do not respect gender balance should be financially penalized. And <laughs> this comes from the dollar sign that I see in the eyes of my colleagues when there is an activity that if you take a woman, you can gain something. Okay, now with a pay, I've, uh, so Lisa asked me, but could you say what you mean? So, oh. Okay, okay. Well, thank you, uh, Annalisa. Examples. 
Uh, just to make clear, this is not part of the Christine Moorman program that you not. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's up to you to vote about this provoking statement of Annalisa. One for agree, two for disagree. Any results? Okay, can I see the results? Oh, this, okay, yeah, okay. But now I want, uh, because it, it might be suggested for the Christine Poor Moment program, please, is there anyone in the audience who wants to make clear why he voted yes, agree? Please? There is a microphone uh, coming to you. Here comes the microphone. Uh, Robert? Robert, here. Um, I voted agree. Yes. And um, I actually do not... Um, agree with uh, with the statement, but uh, disagree is is wrong uh, uh, in a heavier sense than agree is, uh, because I think it should not be the actions that do not respect gender balance. It should be about women. There there is a gender inequality that is disadvantaging women, and if you would penalise those few cases, those very few cases where there is a gender balance. Uh, a conference with mostly women speakers, if you would penalize those, you would do the wrong thing. But in general, given that those are very few cases, I agree with it. Given those very few cases. Thank you. Is there, is there a man who voted agree and is willing to explain why? Yes, there is a man. The micro can go to that. <laughs> Two. So I think it's, a, it's maybe a bit extreme, but I fully agree with Annalisa that uh, in many respects money is uh, where the things go. And so uh, in that sense, I think it's good that the Christine Mormon program takes this input in a positive way and I think we should also uh, consider doing that the other way. Okay, thank you. We are a bit behind schedule so we have to go to the next, uh, to the next speaker. The next speaker is, uh, is, is uh, Harold Beckering. Uh, Harold is professor at the Department of Cognitive Psychology and member at the board of directors of the Donners Institute and your portfolio holder gender diversity. Yep. Harold, up to um. you. Uh, it has already been said, it's, more, it's not only about gender, it's about more. Um, but we also concentrate on gender for the moment. And um, part of it is because we are very internationally oriented, so that's not really our problem. But we also feel that science should not be a national thing, but it should also reflect the whole world. Um, but definitely, if you talk about fostering academic talent, gender and ethnicity are no factors. So we are really there, we want to attract the best talents and we feel that we are missing something. If you just look at the pictures, we are not doing a good job. We, uh, somehow we attract, uh, particularly later on in the careers, more men than women. So we are, and since it's not a factor, we are missing something. This was a real shock for us. 2010, a committee told us, oh, we are really masculine. <laughs> we were sitting there with six men, <laughs> and we did not realize that we were really masculine. But to make the point how easily you can make these mistakes, also here on the back, ooh, I would, I, would feel, I would feel really bad if I was responsible for this now. Not six years ago. That's the point. It really is about awareness. Six years ago, I would not have been aware that this is not a good starting point of such a day, and now I am. So the sister we already talked about. Um, so it is indeed extremely important to increase awareness. And so after our wake-up call, we were helped by the program stages and the facilitators by Inge and Joke. And I think this had a big impact on all of us. So just we were trained, and this was like multiple days, 
to realize what we could do to improve our atmosphere within the Donbas. And also during these discussions it became apparent that it's not only about fact and numbers, you can see at the CISR that's about the postdoc level, I think that's also what we should concentrate on. So why is the CISR there? And um, quota is nice, but it will, not, it will not solve the problem at the end. There's more. You cannot just say, oh, we are going to create a Christine Mormon program and it will do it for us. I think we really should realize that we should also stimulate our female talent a lot. And good examples are like at the postdoc phase, there are some critical steps to take. And we should also motivate our female scientists to take these critical steps. So just nice talk will also not do the job. We need to be honest with each other and we need to say, okay, it is really challenging for all of us to stay in science. If you want to stay in science, there might be some critical steps that you need to do. Personally, I'm also a big fan of the uh, FNVE support for um, women that are expecting a child. That's also one of these things. You should not say, okay, this is a critical stage. At this time, you are getting children, but you should, be, you should feel supportive. So the moment that you get a child, it's a great thing. And the moment that you get back, you should feel like, okay, now I'm a scientist and a mother. Not one of the two. That's what we should really realize together. So this postdoc level is extremely important for two reasons. It's critical scientifically seeing. It's also critical lifetime. Okay. Um, we have a whole plan. I don't have the time to go into it, but you can look it up at our internet. We also have a very active gender committee, which also helps us all the time to be aware of what we can improve within the donors to create a more diverse environment. And so this increases awareness inside and outside the donors to overcome this imbalance in the future. And let me repeat, it's not only about positive um, um, funds to to foster female scientists, it's also really about the whole climate that we need to realize. And the point, well this is more about the gender plan, I don't have a lot of time. We are doing a little bit better, but um, we are not particularly proud on this, so I also skipped that one. <laughs> uh, we have a wish list, and this I think is really important. The first one wish, this, this has been developed by our gender committee, I'm also a member of that, to create a quality-based culture. It was also mentioned before, I think that's what we should go for. And you can think for yourself what does it mean to create a quality-based culture. Definitely it should be less about the amount of publications that you publish than about the quality of publications. Less it should be only about the first order position. If you are really a critical member of a science project, this would be appreciated. It's always really hard to, you can say this, and that's what I mean, we need to change the environment. It's not that you come up with an easy solution and say, okay, we need to, to support quality. We need to think all together, what does it mean? And we also truly believe that if we do so, it's not only better for women, but also for male scientists. So the, the Mormon initiative, it's very nice that we have this now. And again, I like to stress that this support around maternity leave would be for us a key thing to do. Even more, that it's nice that we can attract young female professors but we believe we all should realize that getting children is a very important part for all of us. And we should be very supportive to the ones that deliver them. And say, okay, <laughs> great that you do this, but we also uh, appreciate your scientific part. And so we do the best that we can do to, stay, to help you to stay in science. And so this is another thing. It's also like I went on a sabbatical myself. There was really no support to go there with my family. So it's also as a male, you feel like, okay, I need to choose between going on a sabbatical myself and leave my family in the Netherlands. And I was bold enough to do it my, my, my way, uh, against all odds. I went there with my family, but it was extremely hard to arrange this. I think this is another thing. We should accept that we are scientists and family, man or woman. So they should be very friendly towards these kind of things. Conference support, eh? uh, I think well, most of us can organize a babysit him or herself, but still we should be aware of it. If people from outside come to us, that would be like a better way to say it. We should say, oh, are you coming? Are you taking any children with you? We are very much aware that you can be a scientist and a family man or woman. Uh, the mentoring is also, so that the things that I'm talking about now, we should also really discuss with the young scientists. So how can you create a uh, quality atmosphere, and how can you do this yourself? 
And yeah, this recognition of broader contribution it should not only be about the first person on the paper. It really is about what did you contribute to the quality of science. Okay, so here's my proposal. Focus on quality rather than quantity will remove the gender scissor. May I have your votes? Thank you. Thank you, Harold. Thank you. Okay, the results. Okay, did it surprise you? Um, I think it's a really it's a, it's an important question. Do we think that this will really solve the problem? I think it's part of it only. So I, I also would have said yes, but it's, I, I okay, it's, it's not it's not covering it all. Okay. But I'm happy that people feel that this is the right step in the right direction. Well, what people feel, they can listen to what people say. Is there anyone who wants to? Explain why you voted yes. Please, back, behind. Yeah. The micro, yeah. Um, the reason I voted um, no or disagree was uh, mainly having to do with implicit biases. So I, I, I've been hearing this quality um, strategy a lot, and uh, I think sometimes it can be an excuse um, for, for the kind of... Um, um, way that you're handling things in spite of the fact that implicit biases are still going to get in and people will say yeah but I I only looked at quality right and you know yeah. it just happened to be the case well. that there's six male speakers I can't help it I'm just looking well. for quality yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's no. your reaction yeah no I think it's a good point it can be used as an alibi not to um, do it in a gender proper way um, I think it's just a critical part it will not solve all problems but let's say like one example that I've um, have uh, been approached with myself. Um, there are more male PC students that will fight for the first authorship because they feel like this is really what it's about. And so I need to have all these articles and this quantity driven approach might somehow also be an, uh, uh, create a bias. Well, we should say, okay, now what is your contribution? We should just be way more open about this and talk about quality uh, in general. So like having many articles is of course a very good sign, but it's really is about what was your contribution to science. That's what we should appreciate. And that is a more female way of thinking. It's always in really terms hard to say good? this, but I think uh, that's my experience: is that um, males fight a little bit harder for the first authorship position, for instance, than females. Uh, actually, in, at psychology, you learn you have masculine and uh, feminine characteristics, and of course, there can also be females who are, have more masculine characteristics. Okay, by and more uh, female participation you change yeah. organizational culture in yeah. a fundamental way. Interesting. One reaction more from the audience behind for someone, yes? Yeah, the microphone is coming. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I agree, uh, but I think in order for that to work, we also need to have a diverse notion of quality. And I was wondering how how thinks about that, because sometimes I also hear the argument, we're only going for quality, but then there is a very non-diverse idea, for instance, uh, having first authorship publications in top journals. Uh, is, I think we need a more diverse notion of what, what yeah. can all count as quality. Yeah. No, and that, that makes it uh, a hard notion, this one. Um, it is really about contribution to science in this case. So what is your contribution? The value of the contribution, and we need to discuss all how we want to evaluate it. Okay, thank yeah, you Harold. Thanks. Harold is the only male speaker today. Uh, the third, no, the fourth speaker is Marike van der Brink. Uh, past week uh, is officially announced, Marike, you are appointed to Professor Gender and Diversity. Of course, self-evident that we asked Marike to participate in this meeting and self-evident that she was willing to do so. Marike, the floor is yours.
Thank you very, very much. And the last proposition is a really nice bridge to what I want to tell you, because I was asked to tell a little bit more about um, what are, why, why so slow? Why, why is this inequality, gender inequality so persistent in science? Why haven't we solved it? What are the main mechanisms that keep this gender inequality in place? Well, actually, if I have to tell you all the complexities of it, uh, you should be staying here for the next few weeks, I, I, I'm afraid. So I have only 10 minutes, so I'm going to um, talk about what I think are one of the, m the main mechanisms that are hindering women, or at least that, that keep gender inequality in place. And that is exactly about quality, how we construct quality at the university, in the university system. Um, so I could have talked about the role of gender in informal networks and the exclusion of women and about non-transparent recruitment and selection procedures, but I'm going to zoom in onto this quality discussion. Because for my research uh, several years ago, um, I studied recruitment and selection procedures for full professors. And I also went to the committee members in different disciplines and I asked them, okay, if you want to become a professor, what should you do or what should you be? And they looked at me and they said, well, you have to be excellent. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but what is excellence? And they said, well, uh, well I recognize it when I see it, immediately. So if I am at a conference and I see someone speak and I see the passion in the eyes, I see this is, a, this is a person who is really, you know, a good scientist, or I read an article, but I see it. And of course, as an interviewer, I was not satisfied. I said, but what do you see? What do you recognize? What is this feeling of, you know, what makes you evaluate this person as very excellent? And then they thought a little bit longer because it was very hard for them to make that very explicit. And they said, well, they, ca they came up with the formal list of, you know, that you also see in the job applicants. Uh, like, they say, well, you have to be an excellent researcher in terms of you have to publish in all the international peer publications that are important in our field, the top, top, top journals. You have to be the one that has uh, gained all this, obtained all these grants, you know, the important prestigious grants, the ERCs, the NWO grants, the Renewing Symbols. Uh, you have to be the one that with that money um, built, built your own group, have your own research line, be this international star um, in the field. Everyone knows you. You have to be an excellent teacher. This means that you have to be inspiring for bachelor students students, for PhD students, finish their PhD in four years, that you have to, you know, be, be the one that inspires the bachelor students so that they will keep within the institute and do their master also here in Nijmegen. And you have to be, you have to be a great leader, so a born leader even. So when there are problems in your field that, um, you know, if, in your institute that you say, well, we're going to into that direction, that everyone runs behind you, you know, yes, 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 we do, we are going that direction. You have to have this authority. And even if you're a medical scientist, you also have to be a very good practitioner, that if, you know, the difficult cases all come to you because you are the one in the field. Okay. <laughs> that's a lot. And actually, that's what we call being, um, in, in Dutch, there's a proverb, the, 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 the sheep with five legs, the one that has it all, right? And for this research, I also had access to a thousand appointment files. So this means these are the files where, where committee members uh, write everything down in terms of who what were the candidates, uh, what were, how did we uh, assess their, their resumes, and why in the end did we choose candidate A over candidate B. It's, it, most of the time, it's, it's, it's there. And I had access to it so I could see what actually were the main criteria that professors were appointed. And between us, they were not all excellent in all those criteria, which is not a problem. That doesn't mean that there are, are of course not. There are, it's not that um, there are professors here at this university, or in, in, it is also, it's not only in this university, but all the universities in the Netherlands, that, that, there, uh, n that there are not non-competent professors, not at all. Sometimes it's more important to have someone who, ha who, who is more experienced in building a new curriculum, because that's important for your institute. Sometimes you want someone with a big name, international star for the reputation of your institute when that's the most important. Or when there are troubles uh, within the institute, maybe you have someone uh, who is an experienced leader or has a certain leadership style that is very important for you. So, so the most decisive criteria are not always the same. So that's not problematic. What is problematic 
is that there was a gender bias here, very, um, very uh, uh, visible. In terms of what I saw, when you see, when you see all those appointment files, you can see that there were a lot of male sheep with two or three legs that were considered still excellent in terms of, okay, he's not a real good, or he's not a very experienced leader, but we can give him a leadership course. Or he's not really a good teacher, but you know, we, we, if there's an assistant professor besides him, he will manage. So we have, we, we have feelings of trust that this person will become, you know, a good professor. However, if a woman lacks one leg, I, you know, I'm not so sure about this. I'm not sure whether this is a kind of a risky decision. And the thing is, most of the time, this was about leadership. So this is, this is one of my, uh, my myth, myths. So from this research, there, there I have proposed several uh, myths about why there's inequality. So this is a, a myth, the fifth one. So I don't believe in this. I think uh, scientific excellence or F scientific quality is not gender neutral. And here you see my sheep. And you see the one having the five and having the four and how this works. So, okay, so what is my message? Um, although we really want this quality, this merit meritocratic ideal, we want this in, in academia. Right? We want to believe in it. We want to believe that we have this objective measuring rod where we can easily uh, say who deserves the job or the grant or the prize, but in reality it's much harder because criteria are not self-evident. Self what is innovation? What is creativity? What is it? Um, it's and I believe that this is a, it's a social construction because we have no one easily measuring rod about um, how to assess people uh, for their qualities. So this is a problem also when, for instance, in a committee, everyone has their own interests at stake. For instance, you don't want someone uh, using quantitative research methods or you're more in favor of qualitative research methods, or you want someone who is very close to your um, research or, or not. You know, everyone is, is, has, is there is a lot of micropolitics, let me, let me explain like this. So criteria are multi multiple, interpretable, negotiable and changing, and of course here is what I mean with the social construction, it's in the quality is in the eyes of the beholder. And especially when it's become fuzzy, and when it becomes difficult, difficult and there are different meanings about what scientific quality is, there is this gender bias. Implicit bias, we already mentioned uh, it. And there is a lot of um, experimental research, but also real life research showing how this works. For instance, what is very famous are the resumes. Uh, one with, um, so there are the same resumes. One ha is the, the a resume of Linda, the other from John. They are exactly the same. But when we ask people who is the most competent to do the job, then the majority of people say that John is more competent than Linda. What is happening there? Okay, I'm also happy that the implicit association test was already mentioned. Um, so there's a lot of research backing this up, and we should take this seriously and um, try to create this awareness where um, the former speaker was talking about. So I don't have to show you this, um, how this works, how this implicit, even if we do not have the intention to be biased. I mean, most of the people say, will say that men and women are equally competent to be professor. However, we still have these very strong ideas of what women and men uh, are able of, or the stereotypes that are leading to these kinds of preferences for, or, or associations that are more in line with men and masculinities in terms of um, with women uh, femininity. And for the, would be nice is to Google, for instance, a professor, right, in, in, in Google over a scholar. You, you can, this is the image. Most of the time, when we think of professors, um, or when we ask children to draw an academic, we see a little bit older men with always a white lab coat doing something with chemical stuff, right? And this, this invokes this bias that we, that we immediately think um, about men more, how do you say it, it's more in line with, with men. Okay, so this was so this this quality discussion. We really should uh, reflect with each other about um, uh, what quality is, especially in appointment committees for postdocs to full professors. What is it, and how can we avoid gender bias within this um, evaluation process? Last. 
I want to give some, because there are so much gender knowledge and gender and diversity knowledge here at the university, I also want to give some recommendations to the Mormon program. Of course, it's, it's already uh, starting, but maybe this might help. Um, and what I think is very important is that we don't not only focus on, on women, fixing the women, saying women should behave more like men, they should be more visible, but that we change, as also uh, Hal said, we should change the culture and the climate. That's very important. Not saying how women should behave so they can survive in the system, within the system. Again, blaming the women. Another, another thing is that there's also gender awareness training, which is very important. But we have to be aware that gender bias is not going to be removed in a two-hour session. There's a constantly, I mean, how, how long did it take you, you know? It was constantly attention towards these, um, how, it, how it works. So, so don't take us too lightly. Another thing is what we know from research is always when we want to try to change something in an organization, especially when it's about this sensitive topic of gender and diversity, you will meet resistance. So we have to think about a plan to deal with this resistance because there will people, I, I, even this week, um, a female PhD told me that she got a comment that someone of her, co her male colleague said, well, I bet I can have a sex change because all the grants are going to women now, which is not the case, right? So, but we have to deal, we have to think about how we deal with um, these, these, these kinds of feelings. Because if nobody is against diversity, but if we want more diversity, there's always also something that we have less of, right? So we have to think about this. this. Um, and also, s there's a responsibility for leadership to change this discourse and say, no, we're not doing this to help women, we are doing this to get a level playing field, right? Okay, and for the rest is, of course, monitoring, because if we don't have attention to this, we see how um, it goes on and on. So I want to give this as a small, maybe points of attention to, um, to the Mormon pro program. I hope that it will be a success and that in, um, in 10 years we have better figures, statistics. Thank you. Oh. I've got to introduce my uh, proposition, um, which is this one. Oh. No, if he comes, he, he comes. comes. Yeah, just um, to elucidate. Yeah. Yes, and I, I, I think I did not understand my assignment correctly because I thought I just had to have a provoking one. So this is not what I think. Um, however, I do think we can uh, vote on this, and I'm very curious about what you think. I think it's provoking enough. Please vote. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Ooh. Ooh. Against the background of what Marike has told us, what mechanisms are all working in thinking about uh, quality? Who wants to tell why you voted agree? Yeah? Microphone is coming. Just microphone is coming. Yeah. The microphone is coming. I actually had a lot of problems with this question because it's, it's a layered one. It's two questions in one. I can, while I can only answer one thing. So can it be objectively measured? I agree, but I had to, had to vote disagree because I don't think it's... Uh, sorry, I don't uh, agree with the entire statement, essentially. Um, I'm, I'm afraid that this is going to be very uh, hard to parse what the actual results of, uh, of people's answers are. Hey. Uh, I'm very sorry to say. Okay. Social scientists usually are trained to ask very good questions. Uh, Marike? I said it before we started. This is a multi-layered one because I connected them. So I, I, I expected this, um, this comment. But yeah, you're right. You're completely okay. right. Someone else who did not struggle too much with the question, please. Microphone is coming. Robin? Yeah. 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 I don't think it's, uh, I think they go together because if scientific, scientific quality is objective, that should have nothing to do with gender. So I don't think it's a, a, a double uh, question. 
If it's objective, it's objective. We can discuss whether or not objective exists at all, and I disagree with that. I don't think it does, yeah, because the there's always people, and a person is noid, noid, never exactly objective. But, um, so I don't think scientific quality can ever be objective, but if it is, it has to be gender neutral. So I don't think it's a double question. Okay, thank you. Okay, we go to discussion. Uh, Marike and Harold and Annalisa, can I invite you? Okay. First, uh, I would like to ask to, uh, to both Annalisa and to uh, Marike that in your talk, uh, more or less, or less was a, a pessimistic voice. Because Annalisa, you seemed to, to suggest the only thing that helps is punishment. All other ways are not sufficient. <laughs> and uh, you, Marike, uh, you, tell, you talk so convincingly <laughs> about what all can go wrong in this restaurant. Uh, how, how can we get any inspiration from your talks? Now, I want to ask to both of you this question. Annalisa first. Uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I, re I started realizing that there was something wrong with gender around the 30s, so in the postdoc phase so that was mine. And I was hoping that uh, by the time I would retire, this would be... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, in the in course of line, time... I see it and I see that will not be, I mean, ma complete. So you get a bit desperate. What yeah. should you do? Uh, and you did not only work at Nijmegen University. And uh, in many on the European uh, yeah. level, uh, yeah. in the Netherlands, scores rather bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, compared yeah. to uh, all kinds of... Uh, yeah, but uh, actually yeah. Italy is a little bit better, so yeah. coming here from Italy was stepping back 10 years or so, but not... Okay. <laughs> so, it, it, yeah, so it is possible. So you have... But still, there is still. a long but way But is there anyone it. typical in the Dutch scientific culture that no, makes I think it it's a at, at least in uh, exact sciences, it's a general trend. But and this question science. of quality is really what is quality is the key, the yeah. key word actually is true. Okay, okay. Uh, Marike. Well, I recognize um, what you're saying because this week um, I'm involved in a European project on gender and precarious work, and we gave a workshop, and my colleagues and I, I kind of also talked about gender in, in science, and and one of my colleagues said, Marike. Please, don't be so, you know, say something positive in the end, because <laughs> otherwise... Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but for now, I think because, um, especially this, this one I've been talking about, this, this, this um, gender bias in, in the construction of scientific quality is still a very contested thing. So I want to emphasize that. And of course there are ways of at least making people more aware about that and opening up giving learning experience to people so that they understand when it can go wrong. And then, so, so we do see that there are possibilities, but it, this, that was not. So I, I, I'm happy to come back and to talk more about what we can do in terms of, yeah. of that, but that would be another meeting. Okay, yep. but now uh, awareness. Uh, of course, women must be more aware of career possibilities and so on, but also men. There is also a lot of work to do. Men should be aware, sorry. I, my sen Excuse my me? sentence was not yet finished. Oh. Okay? okay? Of course, female, but also men, there also between in men, there must be more awareness of this, mm -hmm. uh, of this problem. What do you think is the harder task? <laughs> to convince women of the importance of this or to convince men? Both. <laughs> yeah, what is the hard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both of us, it's not so much about. Of course, it's always the people who are um, now in influential, power, powerful position that can um, install policies, uh, new policies, uh, people who hire new uh, postdocs or professors. These are the people we have to target, and those are men okay. and women. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If, well, and not, I, I, it's not about changing yeah. the women. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a very optimistic. <laughs> I'm a very optimistic person, and so I believe that if we strive more for quality, this will also change men as equally as women. So, like, we have been racing like hell uh, to make it in science. If you just look what you described, what you all need to do before you become a professor, it is also that you think, okay, 
did you have any life besides science? Hey, so, and that's also if you, if you look around. I think we need to realize that there are not that many great ideas in science. It's really hard to come up with a great idea. That's what we should focus on. You don't need to work 80 hours a week to come up with a great idea. And I yeah. think we also really need to change the whole atmosphere and say, okay, look, it will be more like a teamwork. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to come up with, with good ideas, and then we should look for the best team to realize this. And yeah, there's yeah. no reason that there should be more male than female yeah, yeah. on this team. In terms of teamwork, getting great ideas, women can be as... Uh, and uh, also more yeah. about quality than quantity. It's yeah. so quantity-driven science now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Audience, we have ten minutes for your questions and discussion. Please. I uh, actually forgot what I wanted to ask. No, no. <laughs> I have to think it for, for a bit. Um, isn't um, what you're suggesting would, sounds like a part-time university? So everybody uh, uh, cannot uh, make an 80-hour work week, for instance, because then only the most narcissistic, ambitious people will end up at the top. And that will always happen. So what would you do against the people who want to do that? No, Should so, you so, do anything? Yeah. No, I think this is something that we really need to face. So if we can only make it with working more than 60 hours a week, we are looking for persons that are, uh, you can call them narcissists or whatever. Um, I think we, we see the change already. And the example that we often use in the donors is like the Google example. People there are just for what they do, not about the amount of hours. Do you know five people that work for Google? Perhaps you know some of them in the higher regions. You just know their products. It really is more about what are you doing together, and this is what should counting. This is what should count, not the quantity of papers. So it's about changing the criteria. If you change the criteria and if you uh, are more open to, for instance, the efforts that a team makes, and you, yeah. and you um, uh, positively, positively evaluate that, then that could change. That's what you mean, and right? And still, for in Google, yeah. people know, like, okay, this is the designer. He is really good in designing. This is the creative person. She is really good in this. So they will, they will be aware of this. Yeah. yeah. And Elisa, do you have clear ideas about the Google worker culture introducing more in the faculty? Yeah, I say that um, a good work is a uh, benefits from different people and. Uh, uh, I, find, I find terrible that uh, in the last years we have to choose this project is for this PhD and does not have to overlap the, with the project of another PhD, whereas if they could exchange ideas and yeah. work together, it would be a much better work. Yeah. Ah, no, but then if yes, yeah, you know. It should be the only question we have <laughs> on the table. What is the best project? That no, should be but the if only you question. Want, in this moment, if you want to have the interest of the person in mind, you have to give him mostly so, him, unfortunately, yeah. uh, three first order and, uh, you know. Yeah? yeah. Th that's okay. how it is at the moment, but that's, that's, I think that's what we should all talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Discuss. Yeah. Should I assure? Audience. Yeah. I'm just really curious. First of all, I'm very impressed by the speech of Marieke. It was so inspiring. Uh, but you seem to avoid the Q word as it's known, not the quality or quantity, but the quotum. So I'm really curious uh, what your personal opinion is about installing quota, because we know that we need about 30% to create a cultural difference. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, the funny thing is when, when we prepared or when we had lunch just before uh, we started here, um, Annalisa was for pro quota. Oh, no? No, I thought no. you said that. Okay. No. Anyhow, then I will keep it to myself. <laughs> um, I, I do think that um, we have been, of course, I'm very in favor of the Mormon program. However, we have been doing and having gender um, equality policies for a long time now. So. I would always be in favor of a little bit more pressure, more, a little bit more power play in terms of getting these numbers even. Because there is this kind of 30%, it, it, it's, it will make a difference. However, you can never do only quota. So you always have to think about, you know, the quota is from, from um, top down, and also there has to be yeah. some kind of 
uh, more cultural program that talks about, for instance, what do we think about what is quality, how do we um, evaluate teamwork, uh, how, what, kind of, what, is, what is a normal working week, um, family friendly policies, all kinds of more and more cultural stuff. So if you have that combined, I think that would be the most effective way of changing um, academia a little bit faster than has been the case now. Thank you for the nuanced answer. Harold? Well, I think quota will not do it. it, I, it yeah. I'm, I'm not against it. I think it's good that we have it, but it will not do it. So yeah. we definitely need a cultural change. It will not contribute to quality. Uh, and at the yeah. long run, it's like yeah. always with punishment and reward. It's only helping uh, for some years, and then the effects will go away. Okay. Bisa, you changed your opinion? No. Uh, and, um, I don't think quota solves the problem. Yeah. And in any case, it's one more burden to on the shoulder of the woman. That is very good, but it's got yeah. the position yeah. for the quota, no. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a quota, but there is a target number. It's a target. target. Strong target, strong yeah. target yeah. yes. Yeah. Quota, no. Yeah. Okay. For me. Audience. Yeah, please. Hi. Um, I read the Christina Mormon program, and actually I was a bit disappointed, and I don't really see how even this tiny target of 25% of women will be reached through the Mormon pro program. And I was actually interested in the panelists' opinion of what they feel about the Mormon program. Yeah. Will it do the trick? Yeah. The last five minutes I will give the floor to Wilma and ask her a few questions, so she will tell something more. But first, your reaction on the Mormon program and the numbers, the targets. Do you want to go first? I don't know. Hmm. You, don't, you don't know what you think don't about... No, you don't, do not have a particular idea. I don't idea. have a prediction. Hmm. Okay. Harold, your opinion about the moment? No, I think it's a good step in the right direction. And yeah. there's always more to do, but I think... Um, I, I really um, appreciate that this initiative was taken. And we should just continue. If we can do more, we should do more. And how is the Christi Mormon program related to the <coughs> initiatives in your own institute? Because you told you are already <coughs> working on the culture and you meant some measures. How does the Mormon program relate to that? Um, I think it is concentrating on young female scientists that can use some, some support. Yeah. Um, how explicit it is mentioned, I'm not really sure. So we discussed it, but like this uh, uh, parental leave issue, I think this would be like a really good one. Yeah. I think it's very important, That's what my, from my own experiences, it makes a real difference if somebody goes uh, for maternity leave and she comes back and there are new data waiting for her. And you say, oh, how is it at home? And you first talk about home and they say, okay, but now you're a scientist again and you're both. Yeah? And you can combine it. That's what we should, this is the feeling that we should uh, give all <coughs> our talented women. Yeah, yeah. Marike, in uh, your career, did you ever use kind of facilities that are now mentioned in the Mormon program? Uh, the mentoring program? No, the kind of, yeah, the mentoring yeah. program. Yeah, yeah. And without the mentoring program, you would not be here as appointed professor? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Okay, <laughs> thank you for this honest uh, answer. <laughs> what is your opinion about the Mormon uh, program? Um, well, that's a diff that is a diff <laughs> um, Difficult question. Of course, I, I do. I, I see that there's been that people also from the the personnel department really worked with full enthusiasm uh, on this program, and people are also have um, uh, talked to the gender experts. And there's always always a balance between what can we actually do and what is needed. And maybe I agree that m maybe we could have done even more. You know, mm. um, because it's very much in line what what already has been done in the past. Is this going to make a big difference? Maybe, maybe not. Mm. But let's keep this yeah, positive yeah. Uh, vibe of at least there's, yeah. there's attention to it. Um, there's a willingness yeah. uh, to do something about it. And now it's also up to us to take it on and, and um, yeah. to and go for it. Uh, uh, Lisa, yeah? No, when I said that I don't have prediction, I don't know whether this will solve the problem, but uh, I'm also positive about this. I didn't want. Yeah, if we can do more, there are good suggestions. I think uh, the board is also open for good suggestions. It's yeah. also up to we all can, of us. Yeah, we can think about. Okay. Yeah. Well, for the final good suggestions, I will ask Wilma. But first, mm -hmm. a hand for the Jesus. Okay, Wilma. 
Uh, allow me to end this meeting yeah. by asking you three questions. What for you, what, what strikes you most in the talks and in the discussion? Well, what strikes me most is uh, two things. I think um, I completely agree with um, all what's said about quality. I think if we uh, succeed in um, improving our quality, uh, quality policy, uh, women will get on the top and we will appoint women. Uh, on the other hand, um, it makes me realize that uh, if it's true what you are saying, Marike, then that means that our male professors aren't of that high quality they say they are, is it? <laughs> So that was a rather remarkable one in my head. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. And what was the most important thing for you that you picked up from the lectures and the discussions? Um, well, I think um, it's not enough that the board of Yes University uh, approved the, the Christine Moorman program, that we have that policy. We can't do it alone. And I think uh, the last words, uh, the speakers... Uh, said are very true. We have to do it all together. And the policy note is a policy note. We have to do, we have to appoint women. And there are a lot of women in our university and there's a lot of talent. And I know from my own experience and very recent experience that there are equal CVs and we still choose the men instead of the women. And that's the real problem we have. We don't look very honest with an uh, honest view to the talent we have at our university. And we don't solve that with quota. So quota is a, is a mean, it's not a goal. It's, it's a way of monitoring what we are doing. And uh, I agree, from 22 to 25% is not a, it's not a big step, I agree, I agree. But it's the total uh, uh, package. It's not alone uh, the quota we, uh, we have written down. There are a lot of more measures we are, we are taking. And I think the biggest challenge we have is the culture thing. And that's what we have to deal with. Yeah. Before uh, introducing the Mormon program, did the board do any research on other universities in the Netherlands, how programs co compared to this program uh, contributed to the, to the problem? Or uh, is this the first kind no, of... No, there, there are, uh, every university in the Netherlands has the same challenge with regard to diversity. We looked at other universities, for instance, Groningen. And some are successful, more or less successful, but all uh, have the same problem with regard to the tempo and the, um, the snelheid. Yeah, uh, the speed, and the that speed, was the, yes. the, 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 the table I showed at the beginning, that we are stabilized now in terms of yeah. numbers, that there is yeah. no progress. Yeah, there's no yeah. progress. And this is yeah. a problem we, yeah, the one university more than the other, but we, we all have that same problem. It's not uh, at, at um, the VS new level, uh, there's a, a, um, a general uh, a policy note for all okay. universities uh, to, uh, to stimulate women and to uh, promote that women are appointed at higher levels in the university. Yeah, yeah. As, as well as management, as board, as, as professors, yeah. etc. Et yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two final questions. First is, can you promise now that in 2020 we'll organize a meeting like this and then when we look what are the results of the Mormon program? Of course. I'm of course, course. Yeah, that's one. Of course. <laughs> and the last, final question, what is your message to the audience? Usually the final speaker has a take home message. Now what is your take to the audience home? Message. I have only one thing to say to you all. Appoint them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.